the cup. For Sebastian, it's the same story every September. A fresh cohort of students, a new set of 11-year-olds will attempt to make his life a living hell. He recalls how ambitious he'd once felt, how driven and optimistic. But today he writes his name on the whiteboard and readies himself for another painful introduction. Good morning, everyone, he says. So far, so good. My name is Dr. Fitch. Welcome to Double Award Science. Before he can utter the next sentence, there's the inevitable, involuntary spasm in his left eye. He blinks and jerks his head to the side, then ignores the snickers emanating nearby. We'll be learning some chemistry today, he starts. But his next tick is a bad one. A grunt finger snap combo. At least a dozen children suddenly howl with laughter. Sebastian lets out a small sigh. Yes, students, you'll notice I have a mild case of Tourette syndrome. And I get that you might find my tics amusing. He gives his rehearsed lecture about emotional maturity, no longer hoping for sympathy or compassion, just that the class will settle down. It's a lot to expect. By the time the bell rings, he sent two children to the hall and assigned five with detention. He notices that several are already slyly referring to him as Dr. Twitch. It typically takes a few lessons to get to this point. When he'd finished his PhD seven years ago, Sebastian had designs on becoming a university professor. The post-grad position he'd intentionally chosen at this comprehensive was supposed to be a brief baptism of fire, a fierce form of exposure therapy, an attempt to control or at least manage his symptoms. No such luck. When the weekend comes, he's ready for a stiff drink, or several, and meets one of his oldest friends in town. Presently, they're three rounds in, and the conversation has taken an unexpected turn. I can't believe what I'm hearing, Jess. You always seem so... sensible. Reserve your judgement until you've done it, she smirks. Unless you're too scared. He laughs. Oh, good old reverse psychology. Nice trick. Pardon me, but I'm correct in thinking that you've never tried anything harder than a few glasses of scotch. Well, I know what I'm getting with alcohol. An inflated sense of self-assurance and a slightly sore head the next day. The thing you're talking about just sounds silly and juvenile. For someone who claims to be a pragmatist, Sebastian, you're awfully close-minded. After one more drink, they decide to head back to Jess's apartment, a short taxi ride away. I can't believe I've agreed to this, the teacher says, before he accepts an enormous coffee cup from his friend. Don't worry, you're in a safe place. But it's entirely illegal. Jess frowns. I picked these myself from a field in Wales. Nothing illegal about that. He sighs, peering at his mug of warm discoloured water, the cluster of grey mushrooms floating on top. Come on, down the hatch, Jess says, taking a large gulp from her own cup. Reluctantly, he obliges, draining his in a few swallows, gagging slightly and grimacing. It's difficult for Sebastian to process the following four hours. Though he occasionally remembers where he is and what he's ingested, which serves as some comfort. The experience is indescribably bizarre. At times he feels euphoric, at others bewildered and scared. He engages in conversations with strange alien entities, witnesses the Big Bang by the most vivid of memories and learns that he is merely one precise vector of a shared, all-encompassing consciousness. Miraculously, however, it all makes sense, even from his scientist's perspective. When the drug wears off a few hours later, he feels grounded again, 
but also energized and excited. Ah, good to have you back, Jess says with a grin. You were gone for quite a while. He suddenly feels self-conscious. Oh God, I didn't do anything embarrassing, did I? After eventually being convinced that he did not, Sebastian apologizes to his friend for his previous obtuseness, for doubting her so stubbornly in the pub. It's absolutely insane for that to be lumped in with other illicit drugs. I take it the psilocybin didn't match your narrow-minded expectations then? No. He lowers his head. But I still don't know what to make of it. That's okay. Jessica smirks. As long as you no longer believe the activity is silly or juvenile. He shakes his head. He honestly doesn't. By Monday morning, Sebastian's weekend exploit seemed like a distant, near-forgotten dream. Was it all meaningless? Just a hollow break from reality? He commences another chemistry lesson with his first years, clearing his throat before asking for silence, certain that a nasty nervous tick is waiting to unleash itself. But it never does. And he tries to remember the last time he had one. Then it dawns on him. It was Friday. Just before Jessica handed him the cup. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and spread the word. Your support is massively appreciated.